Hello everyone. Uh, so today we are going to discuss a case of a two-month-old child who was referred to us uh, with a large lump in abdomen. And when we diagnosed and investigated, we found that he had a large colloidal cyst to begin with. Uh, this is the port position. As you can see, it's a small baby. It's going to have uh, a paucity of space always. And uh, this is how we place them. That's why you go away from the umbilicus almost in the suprapubic region uh, for the camera port placement so that you have a panoramic view. Uh, this was the docking position of the robot eventually. Uh, the docking was done from the head end uh, with adequate padding given to the head so that the child does not uh, have any problems. Now you can see as we go in anyway in a two month old child the space is going to be at a premium but the cyst was so big uh, that uh, you know we had to decompress it before we could uh, uh, have any kind of reasonable space uh, to operate so um, you know this question has been asked to me many times ki, you know uh, is it safe to operate on such small kids uh, he's barely 3.2 kgs uh, but i think um, uh, it is safer to operate them robotically as compared to laparoscopic uh, because of the flexibility of the instruments uh, that is afforded to you and this is a common technique that we follow that we would lift up the liver using a stitch through the falciform ligament and then if required uh, we would decompress the cyst and then hitch up the gallbladder as well now what it does is it, it its play opens uh, our dissection field which is mainly at the porta hepatis and at the duodenum level and also takes the liver out of the equation a small baby very small liver not very heavy and, and this kind of uh, prevents the need for us to put in an additional port uh, just for liver attraction. So uh, small kids, uh, should it be done in the beginning? No, I think you need a reasonable amount of dexterity uh, with the robotic instruments before you decide to proceed with, um, you know, a surgery uh, in such a small kid. Uh, how many number of cases, how much experience you should have, I think, I think those are not really uh, fixed parameters. It all depends upon how comfortable you get with the robotic platform to begin with. And then you decide that, okay, you know, now I think we can move on to kids who are smaller than 5 kilos. Um, a lot of uh, literature will tell you that, uh, you know, operating kids less than 10 kg can be difficult. But I, I don't think, like I said, it's, it's an individualized thing. It's about how comfortable you get with the robotic technique, how comfortable you get with working with the robot as an instrument. And uh, uh, I think that should decide uh, stepwise increments in the complexity of procedures that you do as well as the type of uh, cases that you do as well as what should be the, you know, uh, the size of the baby on whom you're operating. So as you can see, um, the vision is fantastic. Once you adapt uh, to making small movements with your instruments, uh, which will accommodate within the area available, uh, at no point of time are you going to feel there is a paucity of space. Again, we liberally use these transcutaneous uh, transabdominal stitches so that both my hands are free for dissection. Uh, it was a large cyst, so we decided to hang the cyst as well with the abdominal wall. And now I have both the instruments free with me to be able to dissect the duodenum away, to be able to dissect the cyst fairly clearly. The advantage of going in early in this case was the lack of adhesions because of repeated cholangitis. Now this boy uh, was not gaining weight, um, have, was a poor feeder, had a slightly prolonged newborn jaundice, which did resolve eventually, but it was slightly prolonged. And, and I think that led um, to the pediatrician going ahead with an ultrasound uh, and they realized that he's got a lump in abdomen. Uh, when he came to us, uh, we did the MRCP and we also did his liver enzymes and the liver was elevated the enzymes. Uh, we realized, you know, with the absence of weight gain, liver enzymes being raised, I think it's better to go in early and do these procedures uh, because um, uh, in our experience at least, uh, these are the kids who would um, really adapt very well when it comes to these kind of, uh, you know, changes to their anatomy. Again, very large cyst, difficult to go around. Uh, in such cases, rather than uh, doing a guesswork and going where you wish to go, uh, we go right up to the margin of uh, the, the pancreas, which you can see right below my scissors there, uh, the yellowish pancreas. 
so we have reached what we call the retro duodenal part and now we start dissecting it uh, from inside as well as from outside and you try and and remove as much of the cyst as you can of course but there will be times in cases like this where there is no narrowing happening you know you're going to have a large base of the cyst uh, completely adherent around the pancreas and and this is where uh, you know this uh, technique of opening the cyst and going in from inside and outside helps you to get a more precise dissection without damage to surrounding structures and i think this kind of dexterity this kind of flexibility of instrumentation with robot uh, makes uh, the decision to go through uh, using a robotic technique much more worthwhile uh, uh, can this be done laparoscopic of course it can be done laparoscopic but it's going to take much longer time the dissection will be probably have a little more bleeding the vision won't be as good as you get with these uh, robotic telescopes you know so you just proceed uh, the dissection first laterally and then we go medially medially you always need to be careful because all your vital structure the common hepatic the right hepatic the portal vein they're all going to come here near the medial wall so take your time uh, be patient in these kind of dissections these take time they take a lot of patience and and proceed along the pancreatic wall i think that is the safest way to proceed that way uh, you are away from the vital structure so you go close to the cyst wall and close to the pancreas this way you are away from the vital structures and at the same time you are able to dissect as much of the cyst possible and excise as much of the cyst as you can you know some amount of remnant may be left behind here uh, we have no choice because trying to excise that remnant would mean uh, you know extensive dissection either within the pancreas or very close to the pancreas resulting in the child developing pancreatitis post operatively so you want to avoid that kind of morbidity you know if you burn away the mucosa as we will do at the end of the cyst dissection the risk is minimized of a future carcinoma developing we always keep these patients on follow up at least for 5 years uh, in the beginning and then uh, we always uh, make sure uh, that we have at least a uh, follow up every decade and then we will choose uh to keep these kids on long term follow ups with us he is, this this case was done nearly 6 months back he has been in for his monthly three monthly and six monthly follow up and he is doing brilliantly well gained a lot of weight and uh, as such doing very well no cholangitis uh, no feeding issues has gained a significant amount of weight in these last six months since surgery so uh, you know uh, proceed safely Uh, make sure you know what vital structures are there needless to say in such kind of complex surgeries your knowledge of anatomy is very important see variation of anatomy you will come to know uh, from your investigations but i think more important than variation in anatomy is knowing how the anatomy is and how it should be what kind of a structure to anticipate in which place so uh, you know do your study diligently before you proceed with such surgeries my advice to most of the budding uh, robotic surgeons whom are, whom we are training right now is to get proficiency with standardized procedures first like ureteric reimplantations like pyeloplasties because there are certain defined steps the anatomy is more or less well defined in these patients the problem comes uh, you know uh, in in cases like these every colloidal cyst will be different every colloidal cyst will have a different anatomy you know so you need to have a high level of proficiency before you attempt such cases in such small children an ideal case to begin with would be again a primary colloidal cyst who hasn't had a lot of cholangitic episodes and is detected say incidentally at about you know 5 years 6 years of age that that would be an ideal case to begin with and and as you gain confidence you you can't you know kind of go down in age and weight um, so we have disconnected the cyst distally and now uh, the you know the dissection proximally becomes much easier to do <laughs> we proceed proximally till we are able to see the common hepatic duct 
usually common hepatic duct is not involved in this kind of type C cholelytical cyst and uh, as you can see there is a very distinct narrowing and uh, you know beginning of normal anatomy as we approach the common hepatic duct and, and that should be the end point of your dissection. Remain close to the cyst at all points of time. <coughs> make sure you have constant communication with your anesthetist these cases uh, we key tend to start with the pressure of about 10 but then uh, we bring it down to as low as 6 once the ports are in and once the abdomen is sufficiently distended so here i'm i'm going through the callous triangle trying to define the callous triangle as well because like i said huge cyst lot of distorted anatomy we aren't sure what is where and, and now, uh, once we know where the callous triangle is, we know what we are cutting right now is the common hepatic duct and the cyst is not extending into the common hepatic duct, you know. So, get your anatomical landmarks correct. Make sure you do a very precise dissection. As you can see, this dissection has been nearly bloodless. So, if you stick to the right planes, you stick to the right kind of dissection, you make sure that you know your anatomy well. Uh, you are not going to have a lot of bleeding. You know, the robot affords you better vision, better dissection. But they, but uh, eventually, it is the surgeon on the console or the surgeon behind the instrument which determines how good the surgery eventually will be. So make sure uh, here we are burning away the mucosa off the distal stump. Okay, and I decided to close it up because it was a fairly wide stump. We couldn't locate the distal opening, uh, so we thought instead of having a bile leak postoperatively and increasing the morbidity of the child, we would rather close this up. So we closed the stump with a couple of running stitches, you know, couple of knots, and and then that was done. Uh, now we prefer always to do a hepaticoduodenostomy. Uh, you know, uh, we've been doing this for close to a decade now, both laparoscopic and robotic, and and we have got good results. Uh, it retains the normal anatomy it allows the endoscopic access to the biliary system and the liver later on in life if required and it's not anatomically as complicated as hepatic ostomy. again there has been a lot of discussion regarding this uh, what is better and what is not uh, i feel to each his own whatever you're comfortable doing i have justifications for doing um, a hepatic or which I have just enumerated, you may have justification for doing a hepatic or Again, uh, totally your choice of procedure. I am nobody to comment on what should be done or what is the best. This suits us, this works better for us. It's only one single anastomosis. There are no two anastomoses. You're not changing the internal anatomical structure of the intestines and the biliary tree in a big way. We suture this with usually with PDS. Uh, this one is a 5 OPDS that we used, uh, single layer uh, anastomosis. Again, uh, with God's grace, we haven't really had any anastomotic problems uh, in the long term uh, in any of our patients till now. They've all done well, barely any bile leak. Most of these kids will have their, uh, you know, oral started within 24 hours after surgery. This kid was hungry on the same day itself in the evening, but we decided to wait. And that's one another advantage of minimal access surgery is the, is the, is the reduced duration of ileus that you see. In an open surgery, you're looking at an ileus which persists for at least post of day three and day four. Whereas, uh, you know, most of our minimal access patients, whether robotic or lab, would be going home on day four or day five. So in this case, uh, we started him on uh, breastfeeds uh, the very next day. He went on to develop graduated full feeds by the same day evening. So post-op day one and a half, he was on full breastfeeds. Drain was nil throughout and we removed the drain on post-op day two and he was sent home on post-op day four. Uh, we kept him a day extra simply because he came from uh, quite a distance away and it was it would have been difficult for the parents to come back if, if there was any problems so we kind of removed the RT uh, on day one we removed the drain on day two uh, full feeds on day two uh, kept him for two more days till he was you know uh, eating well passing motion well no distension nothing parents became confident and then we sent them home on day four and he's been on follow-up so um, I think um, it's a fair demonstration uh, and a fair argument in favor of doing uh, you know complex reconstruction using a robot in extremely small children
it's safe it's effective just make sure that you have the relevant amount of experience or a mentor in place uh, when you attempt these uh, surgeries uh, in the beginning of your robotic uh, journey uh, apart from that um, just the standard will do a cholecystectomy take out the bone we don't close the ports uh, skin closure we only close the muscle and close it with steri strips given us fantastic results so far and um, uh, all i can say is um, begin your robotic journey as soon as you can and thank you very much for watching this video